Peace be with you. Friends, today we begin Lent. And you may be seated at this point. Because over the next couple of minutes, let's say 10 minutes, we'll be participating in the uh, opening prayer, which is also our Ash Wednesday liturgy. So Lent, the word itself means springtime or change. In a way, the next 40 days can be seen and compared to a seed placed in a dark ground that has to die to itself in order to bring new life. Similarly, we too, during Lent, are facing such conversion when we prepare our hearts and minds to welcome and celebrate new life at Easter. Yes, change is not easy, and it does not happen overnight. So we are given 40 nights and days. So let us spend the gift of time seeking the wisdom of heart taught by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, so that like the seed, we may rise to new life in Christ. And let us now listen to the opening hymn. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is He. Come bow before him now in reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still. Of the Lord, the Holy One is He. Still for the glory of the Lord is shining, shining all around. He burns with holy fire. Great for the gift of life, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, as we enter the season of Lent, help each of us to let go of everything that prevents the seed of the gospel to grow in us. May, through the practice of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, 
we become free from sin and nurture the seed of faith, hope, and love that you have planted in us. We ask this through Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. And I invite Mr. Di Francesco to proclaim the first reading. A reading from the book of Tobit. Through all of your days, keep the Lord in mind and refuse to sin or to break God's commandments. Live uprightly all the days of your life and do not walk in the ways of wrongdoing. Do not turn your face away from anyone who is poor and the face of God will not be turned away from you. Give some of your food to the hungry and some of your clothing to the naked. Whatever you have left over, give away as alms, and do not begrudge the alms you give. At all times, bless the Lord God, and ask him that your ways may be made straight, and that all your paths and plans may prosper. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, wipe out my offense. Wash me thoroughly from my guilt and cleanse me away from my sin. Response? Be merciful, Lord, for we have I know my offense. I am always conscious of my sins. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Response? Be merciful, Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Response? Be merciful, O Lord, for Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will praise you. Response? Be merciful, O Lord, for according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before people in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who sees in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and whenever you fast do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting truly i tell you they have received their reward but when you fast pour oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. So my friends, today we begin the time that we in the church call Lent. It is a time to remember how much we need Jesus to guide us and help us in our lives. During this holy time, we do not sing alleluias, and the main color of banners and the priest vestments is purple. It is a time to think about how much we need to change for the better. It is a time when we turn to Jesus to help us to be better and do better in our lives. During Lent, 
we try to do what Jesus tells his disciples to do in today's gospel story. The three actions Jesus wants us to accomplish during Lent are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer. We make time to talk with Jesus, to say our prayers, to read the Bible, or to read a good book that helps us to become a better person. Fasting, giving up something so that we will be more focused on doing good. This teaches us to sacrifice, to put the other first, to become more like Christ. And almsgiving, being generous to the needy. During Lent, Catholics often give up something. For example, no chocolate or candy, or no television for the entire 40 days of Lent. We realize that we don't need such things, that they are distractions. But not only do we give up something, if we save money because we are not spending it on candies or cookies, then we can offer that money to the needy. It is what we call giving alms, and it is a way to sacrifice. If we have more time on our hands because we're not watching television, we can use that time to help others, acts of kindness and generosity. Jesus says that we should do our Lenten practices without bringing attention to ourselves. Look at me, see how holy I am? No, we do it because we want to be closer to Jesus and to be more like him so that we can do what he taught us to do. We sacrifice for the sake of others our sisters and brothers. I hope that during this Lent, you will know what it is to be closer to Jesus and to experience his love for you. God bless you all. In our Christian tradition, the beginning of Lent, we mark with ashes, either placed on our foreheads, you know, like those, or on top of our heads. The, uh, the second practice is more from the other side of the ocean, placing ashes in, on our foreheads is more of North American practice, and that's why there's that change that Vatican uh, announced that ashes now can be placed on our foreheads, nothing new to me, as that's how I, was, that's how I grew up. And although part of me and this year were almost are deprived of this opportunity of ashes, and then part of me wants to grab a black marker, even permanent one, and put a mark on my, my forehead, but I wouldn't change much. This sign of ashes is just a form of a external sign of our penance. It is what is in our hearts, in our minds, and how we prepare our souls. What matters, like Bishop Crosby mentioned, is the time of prayer, fasting, and giving, doing, and doing good gifts deeds towards those who need it. So at this point I invite you to trace on your own spiritually the sign of the cross on, our, on your own forehead and silently pray those words. Lord, help me remember that I am dust and to dust I shall return. Please, Lord, help me to turn away from my sins, to repent and believe in the gospel. Now I invite Ms. Sambuco to read our prayer of petitions. Prayers of the Faithful. Now with all our hearts and minds, let us pray to the Lord and place our knees before him, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that this season of Lent will be a time of greater prayer and fervent devotion for us and for all of the church. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That these days of Lent will be marked by earnest efforts at peacemaking throughout the, Lord, throughout the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we will be generous in our almsgiving this Lent and attentive to the poor. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer that God will repair all the broken relationships in our lives 
and make us merciful, gentle, and forgiving. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those of us here at St. Thomas More, through the Lenten practice of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, return to God as people of love, faith, and hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the intentions which lie deep within our hearts find answers. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, bless our observance of Lent so that we will live as your faithful, holy children. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let us now join our hearts and voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And now silently, let us offer a sign of peace to those with whom we need most. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we begin these 40 days of Lent, help us to spend the gift of time seeking what is truly important in our lives. May our daily acts of prayer, fasting, and charity bring us closer to you and each other. Protect us in our struggle against evil. May this season of discipline and repentance bring us the blessing of your forgiveness and open us to the gift of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And on those following words, uh, we make the sign of the cross. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this point, I'd like to thank you everyone who made this liturgy possible especially our Seymour crew works diligently behind the camera, those who volunteered to read the readings. Um, and to all of you, just wanted to reiterate the words that Bishop Crosby shared with us and make this time of Lent, time that will make a true change in our heart. You know, the pandemic has taught, that what it has taught us what is really um, maybe refocus our attention to what is really important and how we can get, we can live about certain things. So let us see what is happening and, and spend more time on prayer and spending time with each other and doing good deeds. Uh, here at school, I invite you to participate in, in those daily prayers that now we'll have during Lent. We resume the, uh, the practice of having rosary every Wednesday at 1.40. Then on Thursday, we'll have the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It's a beautiful prayer, a new, relatively new devotion, uh, rather short, again, at 1.40. If you don't know it, it's a very simple, it's a very easy to learn. And then on Fridays, we'll have the Stations of the Cross, or the Way of the Cross, again, at 1.40 uh, in the chapel. And finally, uh, perhaps you already know, but as of today, we are able to go back, graciously, the government, back to Mass. So the churches are open once again. Uh, as Wednesday is not a holy day of obligation, so it's not that we have to be there, but if we can, uh, invite you to do so. And then perhaps throughout the land, pick one day outside of Sunday that we can, would go to Mass, uh, weekday Mass. Once again, thank you everyone, and have a blessed day and a holy time of Lent.